We are Phil and Amanda Rasil. We've been going to Shoreline for three years. Um, we initially heard about Shoreline before we even came here. Uh, I was sitting on my best friend's back porch and we were shopping for churches for us before we moved from New Jersey. Um, and what we were looking for was a church that, um, most importantly, where we felt like they would preach the gospel and they would love our children well. Um, so we came here one of the first Sundays when we were still living in temporary lodging and we've been coming ever since for the last three years. We were able here to just dive right in, moving, moving around a lot. Um, you know, sometimes it's hard to get established somewhere and start to meet people, but I found that the people here uh, were very welcoming right off the bat. We jumped right in with um, some Bible study and you know, Moanas and putting our kids and stuff, and it wasn't long before we felt like we were, you know, part of the community. Kevin and Sherry, they, you know, they invite people to come see them in the uh, cafe every month or so if they haven't met them. And that one particular Sunday, my six-year-old son was sitting next to me, and he was like, Mom, we can go meet them. And I said, okay, we sure can. And so he went up and he found Sherry in the lobby, in fact, and kind of pulled on her dress and said, hi. I'm Alan, and introduced himself, and then Sherry brought him over to Kevin, who still had not made it to the cafe, but was in the lobby as well, and Kevin got right down on his level and introduced himself and said, what can I pray for you for? Um, and my son asked Kevin to pray for his great-grandma, who was really sick and didn't know Jesus, and Kevin took the time in the middle of the chaos of the lobby um, and prayed with my son, and I really appreciate people who care enough to stop what they're doing and deal with something like that, like a little boy who really uh, has a concern on his heart and, and wants to share it with his pastor. After hearing about the called project, uh, Amanda and I both mulled it over by ourselves for a while, and uh, we each prayed about it individually, and came back together and talked about, you know, what we talked numbers, how we could actually contribute. And, And for us, it's not always, you know, a, a strong feeling or some, uh, I don't know, some emotional response. But it's often, you know, what do we think is appropriate? We want to give. We feel like it's uh, an issue of obedience. And so we see a project that uh, seems to have God's hand in it and looks like it'll be fruitful. And we know by competent uh, people whom we trust, and so we decided to give of our resources to that cause. I think that there is a clear leading from God on this. I think he has opened a lot of doors and there are a lot of unique opportunities um, that have been presented to Pastor Kevin and the whole team here, and I'm excited that they are in faith pursuing these uh, and meeting a very real need in the Christian community, um, locally and nationally and even internationally. So I think it is, uh, it's neat to see something that is so much bigger than Shoreline Church and so much bigger than Monterey. And to get to be a part of that is really a privilege. Can I tell you, Phil and Amanda are part of our military community. We have a lot of military in our church and they're very engaged, but they're here for a season. And I got to watch, I, I didn't know their story until I got to watch the video the other day. And when I heard that story, this is what struck me. Here's a couple uh, who are part of this church for a season, called by God to be here. And as of today, they now are re-sent by the military. Ultimately, I say by God. God sends us wherever we go. But to Israel, they're not here anymore. But they felt God say, I'm calling you to be part of the future of Shoreline. And that just kind of blows me away and warms my heart. But even though they're now at their next station and their next place with the military, uh, they were so moved by what God is doing in and through Shoreline, they want to be part of it. And so remember that we're talking over these six weeks of the Called series about saying to God, can I hear your call? Can I step out in faith in three particular areas? That I really want to challenge every single person who calls Shoreline their church home in these three areas. Number one, will you pray with greater passion? We need to learn to pray with greater passion. Our world needs Jesus. Our world is getting crazy. We have to pray. 
Prayer will make a difference. I'm feeling that need for prayer more than ever. I think that there's spiritual resistance, there's battles going on in our world, in our culture, and right here in Monterey, and we need to pray for the power of God. So will you pray with greater passion? I hope every week you hear that challenge. Second, will you serve more intentionally? Will you find a place to serve in some way? It might be here at Shoreline, might be in your workplace, might be in your neighborhood, maybe somewhere else in our community, but serve in the name of Jesus. Help people who are in need. And so we're hearing that call and we're growing there. And number three, give more generously. I would love to see every person who's part of Shoreline learning to take a step forward in generous giving. And and I want you to know that for Sherry and I, as a couple, this has been a challenge. We've been challenged by this and looking at this as people who are called to give leadership in this church because we already give our our tithe, our first 10% to Shoreline. We already give offerings above that to Shoreline and we have about six other ministries we support that aren't part of Shoreline. So we say, okay, now what about calls? What about the needs that God's bringing before us right now? And we've had to pray and seek the Lord. And God's moved our hearts to, make, to say, we want to be part of this. And we're still doing the other stuff, but this is just a next step. And so I, I had somebody the other day say, and I didn't share this in the first service, I had somebody the other day say, you know, make sure you let people know that, that all that's going to happen with call isn't to give bonuses to the pastors. Because people hear these stories about corporations with all this money coming in and we're giving bonuses. None of the pastors are getting bonuses. None of the staff's getting paid anymore. As a matter of fact, your staff are all giving towards this. They're not getting more, they're giving more. And so we're inviting you to be a part of this great work of God. And so we're in this series called. And two weeks ago, we started talking about the fact that we're called to remember that as we walk on our journey of faith, as we follow Jesus and walk with Jesus and live for Jesus, every so often, we need to stop and look back and remember, look how God was faithful. Look how God showed up in power. Look how God moved. Look how God delivered. We remember the things that God did Because we say that same God who's the same yesterday, today, and forever, that same God is with us now. So because he delivered, he healed, he moved, he worked, he'll do the same as we go forward. So we're called to remember, to look back, and then to keep pressing forward. But also we talked about last week that we're called to dream. As we follow God, as we live for God, we say, God, what's your dream for the future? What are you doing? What do you want to do? And we talked about last week how the point of dreaming God's dreams is not this. It's not saying, well, I'll come up with my own thing my kind of own crazy little scheme, my own dream, and say, okay, God, your job is to bless my dream. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about saying, God, what is your dream? What are you doing? How do you want to bring your love to the world? How can we be part of it? And so we're dreaming God's dream. We're remembering. We're called to dream. And this week we're talking about that we're called to build a solid foundation, a place where we can hear the call of God and we can go out with the love of Jesus. And and we are called to have a a place, a base camp, somewhere from which we do the ministry God's called us to do. And and for Shoreline, our location that God's called us to be is Monterey County. And for our ministry, we have a home base, and it's 2500 Garden Road, where you are right now. Now, our military gatherings, we have nine military gatherings. They're watching online. Hello, military gatherings. You're all over the world. But the base camp from which you watch our services is 2500 Garden Road. And many of our military were here at one point and have been scattered around, but they're still there in places where there isn't a Christian church or a Christian witness, so they follow services with Shoreline. But but we have a base camp, a home base from which we do all of our ministry. I had not thought with the, the level of clarity about the importance of a good base camp until this last week when I went and saw the movie Everest. If you haven't seen that movie, it's not for the faint of heart. It's pretty intense. It's based on a true story of people climbing Mount Everest, which is always a dangerous enterprise because people aren't meant to live and survive that kind of a thing. And in this, in this movie, what struck me was they had a series of base camps. And each base camp was like a place of community and life. <laughs> if you're climbing the mountain and you, you're having problems, you want to know that there's a base camp you can come back to and that you're going to be safe. And watching this movie, you realize it's a life and death thing, having a good base camp and getting to that base camp. And for us as a congregation... It's very important to understand that we have this place to gather and we also have a campus in Pacific Grove and we have other places that we gather, but we have have a place so that Christians can gather, not, listen closely, not so we can stay here, hold hands, and be happy all the time. We come together to get encouraged, challenged, fellowship, reignited by the presence of the Holy Spirit, filled with the Word of God, and then we go back out on another expedition, another hike, serving Jesus out in the world. Amen? 
We get these moments, but we have a place we gather together. So I want to talk about the importance of having a place and maintaining a good place from which we then go and do our ministry, where we send teams to India and Nepal, a team leaving today to go to Mexico to work with orphans from this campus, sending people out to our community, to their neighborhoods, to their workplaces, to bring the love of Jesus. We need a good base camp. So I'm going to share with you uh, five parts of kind of God's base camp strategy from Acts chapter 16. If you have your Bible, turn to Acts 16. The passages will also be up on the screen. Just five ways that God kind of strategizes the importance of having a place from which to do your ministry. The first one is very interesting. It's found in Acts chapter 16, verses 6 and 7. The first part of God's base camp strategy is sometimes God closes doors. Sometimes God says, don't go there. Don't focus there. I've got somewhere else for you to focus. So Acts 16, verse 6, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. Isn't that a strange line? Having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. Twice. They're moving somewhere and they're thinking, we're going to go here and we're going to bring the message of Jesus. And God said, don't go there. Now, it wasn't that God didn't want to bless those people. It's just that God had a particular place he wanted them to be. And he was trying to get them to, particularly Macedonia and Philippi, because they had a certain influence in those areas. And God wanted to bring them there to have a base camp of ministry to touch that region. God sometimes says, don't go there. So, More than 20 years ago, Pastor Howie Hugo and his wife Linda, who founded Shoreline Church, looked at the western United States. They thought about planting a church in Las Vegas. That was one of the locations. God said, that's not the right place. They looked at different places up and down the California coast. And God said, not there, not there, not there. God finally said, Monterey. I praise God that he did. Because a lot of you have come to know Jesus because of that calling. They heard the call. They stepped out in faith. Sometimes God closes doors, but then sometimes God opens doors. Second part of God's base camp strategy. Number two, God calls his people to strategic places and times. Location, location, location. God calls certain people to certain places. He did with the Apostle Paul. He did with Pastor Howie and Linda. Look at me at Acts 16, 9 and 10. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Through a vision, God says, Paul, you're going to Macedonia. And Paul and his team said, okay, that's our location. That's where God's calling us. Now, what you find out is that Macedonia was an important region and Philippi, where they ended up, was a very critical city. It was an area where there was trade routes. It was an area where there was art and religion and all these things that brought people in and out. And that location was a perfect place because people would come from all over the known world to that location. They'd hear about Jesus, come to faith in Jesus. And you know what they'd do then? They'd go back home again. And they'd take Jesus with them. And that was part of God's strategy to change the world at that time. So the question becomes, why would God want to you know, plant a church like Shoreline in Monterey? Why a church in Monterey, California? Because God is strategic. I have people ask me, and the friends that I have from different parts of the country, different parts of the world, they'll say, tell me about Monterey. And I'm, I'm like, Monterey County. I'm like, wow, um, how do you describe this area? I, 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 tell them it's sort of, I tell them it's sort of just a really weird area. Because it's this conglomeration. It's, it's not a cosmopolitan center, but it is. I mean, it's not New York City or Chicago or San Francisco or L.A. I tell people it's the most cosmopolitan small town area in the world. Because, because the world comes to Monterey in a way that it doesn't to other small towns. And the Monterey County has all these unique things about it. Let me give you some for instances. I think this is all in the heart of God, knowing that people come here can hear about Jesus, be influenced with the gospel, and then go back to other parts of the world. So, business and business leaders. All kinds of business in Monterey and business leaders who will come here regularly because they have a home here. And for a lot of business leaders, their dream is one day to retire in Monterey, out in this area somewhere. And so they're back and forth, and some of them get connected with the Shoreline Church. Some of them meet you, and you love Jesus, and you share Jesus with them. And they can influence wherever God takes them. So there's a business hub here. And then you have things like resorts, tourism, races, cars, golf, restaurants, weddings, 
People come here for all kinds of reasons. And, and, and they do. I mean, we've got some of the top golf courses in the world in this small town area. Monterey Peninsula has about 160,000 people. Salinas Valley, 160 to 170,000 people. That's not a massive population for all that's going on here. And then military. Defense Language Institute, Naval Postgraduate School, other military work that's done here. People come, they're, they're sent by the government to come here for a time. And a lot of them who are Christians end up at Shoreline Church or other great Christian churches around our community. And they grow in their faith and then they get sent by the military and by God to bring God's love to other parts of the world. There's military people that come to, to Monterey that don't know Jesus. And they're reached out to by other people in the military. And they come to Shoreline Church and they give their hearts to Jesus. And in six months or eight months or 12 months, they're sent somewhere else. But now they go out as the light of Jesus Christ in those parts of the world. Isn't it amazing? What a strategic place Monterey is, but it doesn't end there. There's more. Produce and agriculture. If you have a salad virtually anywhere in the world, something in your bowl came from this area. I mean, if you have an artichoke, you know where it came from. Um, it's just, and, and so there's, there's these business ag people who are influencing all over the world, and a lot of them are Christians. A lot of them are part of Shoreline and other great Christian churches. And so because of the agricultural work, there's a connection around the world and the gospel can go out. Art. Art. I've been told that the largest, that the city that, that ships the most art in our country is New York City. And the second, the city that ships the second most art of any city in the United States is, take a wild guess, Carmel. Because like three out of four shops are art shops, right? And so there's this art hub and people come in and out for art. But Jesus is here. And Shoreline is part of that great work of God. And people come to know Jesus and then go out. And so the art community begins to spread the gospel of Jesus. Languages, growing number of languages spoken in this area. This is why we're starting Iglesia Shoreline. It won't be long until we'll have an entire service in Spanish. Announcements, music, sermon, everything. We want one on this campus, one in Seaside. Because there's growing language groups in this area. We want to share Jesus so they can bring Jesus wherever they go. Colleges. We have colleges, so we have, we have young people coming to this area to go to school, and lots of them co- end up coming to Shoreland, and many of them become Christians. And then they go, get sent by God to other parts of the world. Most of them don't stay here long term because it's expensive to live here. But after college, they go somewhere, and they bring Jesus with them. We've got the ocean and a world-class aquarium in this little area. And people come to study and come to learn and come to enjoy. And then they go other places. All these things become this hub that God brings the world to the Monterey County area. And if we can have an impact with the gospel right here at our base camp, and then they go back out with the gospel, that impacts the world. That's what God did in the first century to the Apostle Paul. Planting churches in strategic locations where there was world trade and religion and art, and they would come to know Jesus, and they'd go back and bring the message. God has a strategy and a reason why we're here doing the things he's called us to do. So his base camp strategy is the right place, location, location, location. And God knew this was the right location. Number three, God's base camp strategy. The focus is always Jesus and his good news, his gospel. If if we are going to become that place that impacts the world, we have to keep our hearts and minds on Jesus and his good news, his life, his death on the cross, his resurrection, and the hope that people have in Jesus. Amen? That's the focus of our church. I'm sure the church exists to help as many people as possible become totally committed to Jesus Christ. And so again, in, in verse 10 of Acts 16, after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to... Preach the gospel to them. The minute that Shoreland is not about preaching the gospel, we cease to have a reason to exist. God has put us here so that out of this this central place of love and community and faith in Jesus and belief in the Bible and understanding of the good news of Jesus, we can spread it with the world. And if we're not going to stay focused on that, we shouldn't be here. But you know what? We are focused on Jesus more and more with each passing day. And because of that, God wants to use us to spread his good news from this base camp where the gospel is proclaimed. Number four, God's base camp strategy. Your community becomes a hub of gospel activity. What happens is when we're living for Jesus and following Jesus, all these gospel things start to happen all around our community, in our lives, in our homes, in our neighbors, in our workplace. I get to hear the stories. It's amazing what God is doing. Here's one that happened back in the days of Paul. Verse 12 of Acts 16. 
From there, we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony, and a leading city of that district of Macedonia. God was leading them to this leading place, this hub of activity to send the gospel out. And we stayed there several days. What they ended up doing was staying there, but they left the church behind, a hub of gospel activity. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer, and they did. We sat down and began to speak to a woman, the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth, some of the most expensive material in the world at that time, probably a very wealthy businesswoman. And so she, as she was a worshiper of God. She believed in God vaguely, but not Jesus specifically. Watch what happens. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. What was that message? Well, he said before, we're going there to bring the gospel. He shared the gospel. She responded. Verse 15, when she and the members of her household were baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, she invited us into to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. And they, and they set up in that town. Matter of fact, the book of Philippians is written to the church at Philippi. It was started through this movement of God. Just like God started Shoreline Church, God started the church in Philippi. He starts churches so he can be, create this space to spread the gospel. And that takes us to the fifth thing in terms of God's base camp strategy. Through prayer, ministry, and pressing through, the gospel changes lives, homes, and a community. It, be, it becomes this, this hub, this place where lives are changed and homes are changed through the gospel of Jesus. And understand this, if you read all of Acts chapter 16, there will be pressure and spiritual resistance. There is growing and mounting pressure and spiritual resistance to Christians in general, to the Christian church, and it's going to increase in our culture, in our world. And the need to have strong biblical churches that believe the gospel is becoming greater and greater, and we are going to be that kind of church. I pray, I pray in the name of Jesus, I pray until Jesus returns. And I don't know when that's going to be. Some people have it figured out. I don't know when it's going to be. But until then, I hope and pray that we can do all we can to make sure, make sure Shoreline is a hub of gospel activity. And also there'll be victory and the gospel will take root. You'll see lives changed and homes changed and families changed. I had one of our music, musicians tell me this morning, just give a little quick personal testimony standing in the hallway. He said, when I came to this church, I was cynical and I just came because I thought I probably needed something like this. I didn't know Jesus. He said, that first Sunday, the music and what happened in this church began to change my life. He's now a Christian and one of our, on, our, on our worship team. Changed. Roots going in and making an impact for Jesus. I could, there's hundreds of stories like that at Shoreline year after year after year. And God will keep calling us out. God is just going to keep calling us to go out and to share His love and to share His grace. But here's the key. We need a base camp. We need to make sure. Because for Shoreline, like this morning, right now, there's, a, there's about 300 people that are part of Shoreline meeting in Pacific Grove. They rolled trailers from here in our parking lot to there and set them up. They're having services. They'll bring the trailers back here. Before I leave today, the trailers will be rolling back in the parking lot. I see them every week. I thank the guys that are unchaining the trailers. We don't have a campus in Pacific Grove that belongs to us. We use a local school. This is the base camp. But lives are being changed in Pacific Grove. Lives are being changed from here as we train and equip people around the world through our missions. And so we need to make sure that this base camp is solid and healthy and strong. I want to share some of that story and have a number of people talk to you about some of the needs that we see to make sure that we keep this a strong, healthy base camp. So watch the screens and hear some of the folks that are part of your church share some of their story. You know, Shoreline Church has always been about mission. Shoreline Church is big on mission and reaching out because our heart is as big as the heart of God. Our heart is as big as this world that God has called us to live in. I want to invite you to go with me on a journey, a journey that involves dreaming, looking forward, saying, God, where are you taking us? A journey of listening to the call of God. For 20 years, Shoreline has listened for God's call, we have heard. And we've stepped out in faith again and again and again. And now, we're at a unique time. We're looking ahead to the next 20 years. We're saying, God, speak to us in fresh new ways. Call us in bigger ways to reach our community and our world. 
and help us have the courage to step out in faith. I invite you to join me, to join all of us who are part of Shoreline Church, to go on this adventure together. I, I believe with all my heart that God is an acting God. He's a living God and he hasn't changed. He won't change. And um, the Lord that we serve, um, I believe that uh, this, this congregation is a, a life and I, I, I can see uh, the work that the Lord is doing. One of the most important things for me is, is to reach the lost. So when I invest my time, my money, to the kingdom of God for it to advance and reach the lost, then that, that brings great joy to my heart because I was once lost. I was in the world. And when that one person stood up in faith and was faithful in the giving, I had a place where I can go and hear somebody preach and teach the gospel, where I can go in and have fellowship with people, that I can go to a church. But it was because there were those faithful ones that gave even when it was difficult, even when they had very little. Following Jesus, serving Him, sacrificing for Him, these things are not a chore. This is the adventure of the Christian faith. And I'm inviting you to join us on a journey, on an adventure. I think of it like a hike up a mountain where you start and you begin climbing and it's kind of easy and it gets steeper and tougher. But if you work together, you can make it to the top. That's the desire. And every good climbing team knows you have to have a safe, solid base camp. You have to have a place from which you hike out, from which you, you go that you can come back to and be safe. And really, we look at 2500 Garden Road, this property I'm standing on right now, that God led us to some years ago as our base camp. It's from here that we're launching new campuses, from here that we go around the world and train people in outreach, from here that we go right in our neighborhoods and share the love of Jesus. This is our base camp, but here's the challenge. Our base camp is not in great shape. We have some issues. Uh, we have things that need to be fixed, repaired. We have things that we've never done that we were supposed to do when we first moved in that we planned on doing. I want you to hear a few people talk about this base camp and what we can do to get it ready so that from here we can keep going out with the message of Jesus. As you see behind me in Anchor Bay, we've tried to set a bit of a tone. So as families and children come into our arena, they feel like they are welcome and expected. Uh, as such, we've developed uh, some atmosphere around our children's ministry arena. And so we have worked throughout our whole campus to try and bring a sense of welcome and color and vibrancy. And it's really carried out pretty much through our whole campus, except for... Pastor Kevin has talked to us about having a vibrant and vital base camp. But the lighthouse room is incomplete. Our base camp is not finished. There are details that need to be brought to completion in our tide pool and reef and cove areas as well. This is part of what we're talking about, establishing a great base camp for Anchor Bay Children's Ministries at Shoreline. I'm here on the roof of our facility here at 2500 Garden Road. We're on the roof because this is one of the areas of this church building that really could use a lot of work. We've got leaks throughout the building and we've done some patchwork, but it needs a little bit more attention. And this is going to take something to, to be fixed. So up here on the top of our facility, we need work. And all the way down there on the bottom, the parking lot is a mess. And if you've been driving through, you understand. Roots are coming up all over the place. The asphalt's coming apart. We've done a patch job. We've made it look nicer and we've re painted some stripes but overall that parking lot needs a total facelift this facility here is something that we've been entrusted with and we use it to lead people to Jesus and help them grow in their faith and if we don't put some more resources into the building ultimately it's not going to be usable for us so we want to make some improvements around this place to better and more effectively fulfill the mission of Shoreline Community Church the hospitality center really needs um, a lot of love and investment uh, put into it. As a congregation, we've been growing, but our hospitality center has stayed the same, and so we haven't really been able, the more we've gotten different supplies to, you know, accompany and, like, really adapt to our growth, uh, they've kind of just been stacked and, like, pushed wherever they can in different corners and stuff. 
We only have one fridge to use. Um, it has three different slots, but whenever we have an event on top of like Sunday or Mondays, even like OOC, we run out of fridge space. And so we have to sometimes use the food pantry fridge and um, it's really packed very tight. It would be super helpful if we could have some money invested into this place. Well, I hope by the time you see this video, I'm able to tell you about a property that we can start moving towards purchasing. But right now it's kind of veiled in secret, so I can't tell you a lot of details. But if we can get this space, it'll provide for us close to 40,000 square feet of space, just under 200 new parking spaces, storage space, a place where we could expand offices, have an organic outreach international ministry center, have a youth center, expand our ministry, potentially some adult classrooms. It's an amazing space, and I hope and pray if God opens the doors, it even would allow us to make potentially to have a drive through and alleviate some of our parking situations on Sunday mornings. So right now is a, is a very important and very critical time in, in our student ministries here at Shoreline. Uh, we have the potential of having um, our very own youth center, which um, kind of opens the door for possibilities that we are just dreaming about right now. Well, right now, the student ministries is all over the church building. Uh, sometimes we meet in the Parkside room. On Sundays, we're like way over in the garden room. Clearly, this is not a student ministry designed room. So we'd love to have a room where we could just go crazy, we can go wild, we can throw balls around, we could run around, and uh, this just isn't a room for that. We'd also like for there to be space where little, like small groups can meet um, and have their quiet time as well. When multiple small groups are meeting in this room with about 30 to 50 kids, um, it, it gets it gets very loud and you're not able to have that intimate small group time. We just ask you that you would pray and consider whether you are called to help make this youth center a reality. So before Shoreline purchased the property that we're at at 2500 Garden Road, uh, they looked at a particular part of the property, uh, this dirt area, and what leads up to the building and thought what a beautiful courtyard area this would be. And there were plans for a courtyard then. Some years ago we talked about putting a courtyard in. And as you can see, it's dirt. It's just, it's just still dirt. And part of finishing our base camp, getting it ready for the future, is to put our courtyard in and finish this, to have a place where people can gather for meals, for family reunions, for outdoor weddings, for student ministry gatherings, between services, for fellowship. We want to have an outdoor gathering place that's beautiful and comfortable, and this is what it's going to be when we finish up our base camp. So God's given us this amazing place. And you know what struck me is I wasn't even here. I wasn't part of Shoreline when many of you prayed and sacrificed and gave and worked to make this a reality. But I'm blessed because of it and other people are blessed because of it. And down the road, people will be blessed because we've taken seriously caring for what God's given to us. I want to challenge you. If, if you right now, you think about the idea of being part of this and you're saying, I don't even know. You know you're talking about being called and stepping out in faith. I don't even know if I'm in a place with my own faith where I'm really hearing God's call and taking any bold steps of faith, here's my challenge to you. Uh, today, before you leave this campus, will you go by the called booth and, and would you say to them, listen, I want, if you don't have your own Bible, ask and we'll give a Bible to anybody who wants one and that's part of your offering money at work is that we give Bibles to anybody who wants Bibles. We'll give you a free Bible. If you have a Bible, here's a 50-day reading plan to get you started in reading the Bible and started in the Bible. You can go by and say, I need a Bible and a reading plan or I just need a reading plan. But if you say, I don't even, the idea of being called by God and stepping out in faith, I don't even get all that. Just start meeting with Jesus. Get into his word. Let him speak to you. Let him capture your heart because when you get close to Jesus, you start to hear his call. You start to step out in faith. I was thinking about this, um, this reality of the base camp and I'm watching this movie Everest. And here's what struck me is that when all these climbers took off from the base camp and they started climbing up Everest and they're, they're climbing together and it's, you know, it's a beautiful day. I won't, no spoiler alerts here, but it's just, you know, starts out. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. They're climbing. And at that point as they're climbing, they're not thinking about the base camp. They're thinking about the summit. But when the storm clouds roll in, all they could think about was the base camp and getting back there. And I hope that we as a church understand that we have this one location that is our base camp. This is our primary place of ministry. We're going to plant a campus next year in Marina. We have a campus in Pacific Grove, but all those leaders meet here during the week. They have offices here. This is our base camp. They park the, the, the trailers with all the stuff for the Pacific Grove campus here at the base camp. On, on, on nights of worship every month, we gather here at our base camp. 
Awana programs happen here at our base camp. There's things that are going to happen in all of our campuses right here. So I want to challenge you to be praying and saying, God, how can I be part of making sure that what we have happening here continues? And here's my goal, till Jesus returns that we're here doing the work that God's called us to do. So Shoreline Church exists to help as many people as possible become totally committed to Jesus Christ and having a good base camp is part of it. Amen? Amen. So let's pray and ask God to help us in this. Lord Jesus, we come before you and we thank you that you are here and you are working. We thank you that, that over 20 years ago you called Howie and Linda to start a church in Monterey County. We thank you that, that, that seven or eight years ago, you opened up a place for us because from here we can do so much great ministry. And now we pray, Lord, that we would take seriously taking care of this space so that until you return, Jesus, there's a mission outpost, a hub of gospel activity right here that goes around Monterey and around the Monterey County area and around this nation and around the world for the sake and the glory of Jesus, we pray. And everyone said... Amen. Hey, before you go, I want to encourage you, take your card for the Halloween Family Festival and your organic outreach uh, registration. And if you'll go out and drop those off either at the call center or this can go out in the, in the courtyard area. I'm using courtyard very loosely in the dirt area. Uh, you can drop this off at the booth for this. And then also, if you didn't get the prayer card, we're on week two of our prayer card this week. So start praying week two. And this is also a brochure that will be at the uh, call center. Get those as you go out. If you want prayer, come up for prayer. And if you're new, before you leave, go by the Connection Center. And we want to give you a gift. And thank you for coming to answer your questions. So new people, go by the Connection Center. God has called us this week. Step out in faith and live for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Have a great week.